Hey guys, today we're going to use three lasers of different colors, red, green, and blue. We fixed them at an angle of 120 degrees. This way we got the three lasers to intersect at the same point. You can see the beams clearly if you put some smoke on them. Today we're going to see how different objects behave when they are at the intersection of three laser beams. We'll start with a piece of meat. Let's see what kind of burns these powerful lasers can leave if you shine them on the same spot for 10 minutes. And right away we can see how much the chicken shines through because it is at the intersection of rays. Because of its shape it looks like a light bulb. In 10 minutes of observation, we saw smoke only once, and it happened in the place where the blue laser was shining. 10 minutes have passed, let's see what we have. This is the result of the blue laser. Red. Green. The green one seems to be the smallest burn. The red laser left a bit more of a mark. The blue even charred the area where the beam hit. There's a reason we saw the smoke. At least now we know the power of what we're up against today. The next item is a quail egg. It might even be possible to cook it this way. It's small. The idea is that the effect of temperature will be much more effective than on meat. Nothing interesting happened in the first two minutes. Although we did see some smoke, and again it was from the blue laser, it's the most powerful in our arsenal and the one we have the most hope for. After 10 minutes of intense laser treatment, we can see the result. Where the blue light shone, a small mark was left, hardly noticeable to the human eye. The green and red beams had no effect at all. Yes, the egg, or rather the shell, exceeded all our expectations. Next up is a styrofoam cube. The funny thing is that it's white. And laser, as we know, is the most ordinary light, although it is concentrated in a powerful beam. The white color should reflect any light source. Now let's see if the laser is as cool on white objects. The cube glows beautifully, but no more. There's no noticeable effect from the laser. Even it can't defeat the laws of physics. So let's change the conditions a bit by drawing three black dots on three surfaces. As soon as we turned on the laser, a hole appeared on the blue side. The red and green lasers are not as powerful, so we did not see the results of their impact until we turned the lasers off. The red laser melted the styrofoam just a little. The blue one made a deep hole. The green one was an outsider as usual. The next object is black. It's a balloon. We blow it up to the size of a coconut and drop it at the intersection of the three beams. Immediately the blue laser burns a hole and the balloon begins to deflate. The result is quite expected, but we're interested in a slightly different point. If you fill the balloon with water and then put it under an open flame, the balloon won't pop because the water inside prevents the rubber from heating up to the burning temperature of the rubber. What if we replace the flame with a laser? We placed the balloon at the intersection of the beams and watched. It only took a few seconds for a hole to appear on the blue laser side and for water to start flowing out in a small trickle. 
We hoped that the red laser would repeat the success, but instead we got a few more holes on the blue laser side. Next, we place a candle at the intersection of three lasers and see if it is possible to light it with a beam of light, or is it only possible with an open flame? We turn on the lasers and watch. Literally immediately the wick starts to smoke. So far it's just smoldering. It's not hot enough to light a candle and it's been over five minutes. But we don't give up and keep lighting it and the candle continues to smolder. And finally, the burning temperature was reached and the candle was lit. The efficiency of the method is so bad because we had to spend a lot of time. We also have a beautiful salt crystal. It's transparent and should be able to transmit radiation. But it's still interesting to see how it behaves under the intersection of three lasers. Let's set it down and watch. The crystal glows like an unusual light bulb. It's transparent, but it blocks part of the beam. and the blue and green lasers are refracted as they pass through the crystal. But the most interesting thing happened when the lasers were turned off. Condensation formed on the salt. What is that? Is it sweating? You can't see it on the camera, but if you swipe your fingers, you can see how much water has formed on the crystal. Yeah, we didn't see that coming. That's all for now. Bye-bye.